bikepacking has a lot of moving parts, but perhaps one of the most important to me is the time spent at camp and finding a spot that is well suited for the post-ride portion of your day. Some campsites are certainly better than others, and some areas are better suited than others as well. So in this video, I'm going to give some basic guidance as to how to pick a spot while out bikepacking. Let's do it. Before we dive into it, I just want to mention that this video is supported in part by Surly Bikes. Surly makes serious steel bikes for people that don't take themselves too seriously. They make bikes that are versatile and durable, that can be dressed up or down for commuting, bikepacking, ATBing, gravel grinding, or really whatever you call fun on two wheels. With 15 original dirt-friendly platforms, they offer something that fits just about anyone for any style of riding. So for more on Surly, make sure to hit this card right here, or you can find a link in the description below. So first and foremost, there's some basic guidelines when finding a campsite. Many of these have to deal with leaving no trace, like camping on durable surfaces, such as pre-established sites, or at designated campsites, as opposed to making a new campsite and impacting vegetation. Grass, sand, dirt, and rock slabs are all good options. Avoid untouched soil and heavy areas of vegetation. And if you need to move a rock or use a rock as a stake, which by the way works really well, just make sure to put it back where you found it. As bike packers, we need to be good stewards to the land that we're camping and riding on. And that starts with reducing our impact as much as we can. So remember to leave the site better or just as good as you found it. So on a recent trip with my buddies last week, we found a pretty nice campsite, but we really kind of wanted to be a bit further away from the gravel road that we were traveling on. So we went searching up the road for two miles and there were some nice potential spots, but nothing that had actually been already impacted. So what we ended up doing was backtracking to the impacted spot to save the fragile desert vegetation and the cryptobiotic soil. Sure, it was annoying to pedal an additional four miles, but it was the right thing to do. And while this is certainly more of a concern in say the desert environment, it's a good general rule. Don't make a campsite for the first time unless you truly have to. The other thing you need to consider is your daily mileage and knowing that can very well change for a number of reasons. So this means planning on a few campsite options is probably beneficial and knowing where you can and can't camp is also helpful. Also understanding if your campsite is in a designated campsite or dispersed and if you need to book ahead or not. There are also some states that have walk-in or bike-in camp spots, so make sure to call ahead because you might not need to pay in advance. This is obviously beneficial if your timing or your daily mileage might not align with camping at a particular spot that night. Just make sure to have some extra cash on hand for that site. If you are camping in a dispersed area, the other thing you will wanna kind of figure out is if there is water or a bathroom. If not, make sure to plan ahead. So there are a handful of camping resources that you can use. So first off, if you are riding one of the many routes on bikepacking.com, many of those routes already have marked campgrounds or notes about camping, such as if it is abundant, where to avoid, and everything in between. And while this might not be available for all of the routes on our website, it is a good starting point. And these camping spots have either been camped at or have been passed along along the way, and they are almost always guaranteed, which is nice knowing, especially when you are actually planning your trip. Another strategy I like to use is to make note of other sites during past bikepacking experiences. So say you are going at a faster or slower pace or in the opposite direction, the site that you may have traveled past in the past uh, might work well in this case. Same goes for day rides that just might work well if you are going out on a short overnighter. Prime example of this was actually camping at White Ranch just a handful of years ago. I found that there was a bunch of camping up at White Ranch on my day rides and I ended up using that on an overnighter. I actually have a video on that overnighter and you can find that in the description below. All right, so another good option is to use technology. So topo maps, they're fantastic because they point out flat spots next to say your trail or road that you're traveling on. So for example, even though I've pedaled Cane Springs Creek before, I've never actually been to the spot that I marked where I wanted to camp on my most recent trip because it's kind of slightly off route, but it looked rather flat on the topo map. So then I got satellite imagery out and sure enough, it looked rather clear of trees. 
So when we got to that spot, it had been impacted by a bunch of cows, but there was no cows there. And it was basically a sand pit right next to Cane Springs Creek. So fresh water right next to camping. It was pretty magical. And another benefit of just using these maps is to understand the surrounding land. So making sure that you're not actually on private land or setting up camp on private land. So just make sure to stick to that public land. And the last resource is word of mouth. So I definitely take word of mouth with a grain of salt, but it can be helpful to use the resources previously mentioned to supplement a suggested spot from a friend, especially if they send you a location or a pin, just make sure to do your homework and not just rely on the pin sent from your friend because you just, yeah, you really never know. Either way, finding a campsite can be a challenge. And oftentimes I find myself looking for that perfect spot, taking way too long, the sun sets and Neil's still riding around looking for camp. Yeah, that happens a lot. I just need to remind myself that any spot outside is better than inside. All right, so I know there's a lot of different resources out there, a lot of different ways to do this. So if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like what you saw in this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. Support from our members sustains this channel and really everything we do at bikepacking.com. The collective has a lot of perks, including giveaways and the twice annual bikepacking journal. So for more details, click on the card in the top right corner, or you can also find the link in the description below. As always, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, pedal further.